In this video, we're going to investigate, hopefully remind ourselves, of the geometric interpretation of an integral. So, what I have here is just your standard Cartesian coordinate system. If you've never seen it written like this before, all I've done is replaced y with f of x. The idea is, is I, I have a function with some dependence on x, and then I have my input variable x, and if I input a particular x, I get a, such as maybe this x value here, I get a particular value for my function, which maybe would be there. And if I input, you know, this value of x, maybe I would get a value of my function that's, that's there. That didn't line up very well, but somewhere around there. Maybe if I put in this value of x, maybe I would get a value of my function that's, that's here. So if I assemble all those points... I get a graph, so just don't let the fact that I'm not calling it y confuse you. I'm just calling it f of x, that's my function, and then I have x, my input variable. f of x would be my output. So let me just get a, uh, a simple function here. We'll just do something maybe parabolic. Yeah, that'll work. So I have the, um, the function, and then I have the input axis. And what I want to do, so, you know, the idea is here, there's, there's, there's an equation for this f of x. I don't, I'm not going to write it down, but there, an equation exists, and that's probably how I got the graph in the first place. And then I'm going to be asked to integrate this equation, right? And so I'm going to be asked to evaluate this, the integral of f of x dx. And if you've taken calculus before, you know that you can evaluate this as a, an indefinite integral or a definite integral. I'm going to evaluate it as a definite integral, which means I'm going from some particular x value, we'll say it's x1, to another value, x2. Right. So I'm starting, I'm going to evaluate my integral, and then when I actually go to plug in numbers to find out what this thing looks like, uh, I'm going to start at some particular x, which I've called x1, another particular x, which I've called x2. And those will be given to you, you know, by the problem statement. So let's see if we can figure out what in the world this means geometrically. So let me remind you of what dx is. dx is a differential, but how did we get there, right? We got there by taking a, a distance. We took some delta x, right? Some change in x. And so... And as in my exa example, you know, I'm, I would start here, and this would be my x initial. That would be my x final. I would take x final minus x initial, and I would form delta x. But, but what I want you to see is that it's just a length, right? It's a distance. It's got units of meters. So my, my differential here has to have units of meters. It's, it's a length. Um, and then how did I turn delta x into a differential? Remember, I take the limit of delta x uh, at, oh sorry, the limit as delta x approaches zero, I should say. Uh, I let delta x get really, 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 really small. And in math speak, that means I let it become a differential. It's got an, an, a f an infinite, uh, sorry, an infinitely small length. That might seem weird, right? That, that, an infinitely small length, what does that even mean? And if, that, if you're feeling that way, I certainly was there when I took Cal 1 the first time. I certainly went, what, I mean, how does that have anything to do with reality? Um, it does, <laughs> at this point, maybe just take our word for it, myself and your calculus professors. Uh, if it really, really bothers you until you get there to where you can say, okay, I, I agree with that, just think of it as a really, 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 really tiny delta x. It's really tiny, but it's got some sort of length to it. In truth, a differential has no length to it, but if, if that bothers you, just think of it as a very small delta x. All right, so now that takes care of dx. dx is just a length. Uh, and I, let me leave this as delta x for, for now. Now, what is f of x at that point? Well, I've got a collection of points, right? I've got the distance in between the, where I've marked here for delta x. And so if I look in my f of x, let me switch to a different color here. Those are the values between here and here, right? But please notice, as I... It's, and those are different values, right? They're different values for every point within that um, that delta x. But as I let delta x get really, really, really small, 
notice that these two red marks are also going to get really, really close together. And they're going to begin to converge on a single value of f of x. Uh, so even if I don't take delta x all the way down to a differential, my value for the function across such a tiny little space is basically the same thing. It's basically, you know, that is to say the value at this red line and this red line, if I let those lines get close enough together, that value is basically the same value. So what I'm doing here is I'm multiplying dx, which is a length in this direction, by f of x, which is a value in this direction, right? So really, I'm multiplying a bottom side times a side. I don't know if that makes any sense. What I'm doing is I'm taking this length here and multiplying it, th sorry, this length in the horizontal direction, multiplying it by the length in the vertical direction. So from the units, you know, if f of x has units of meters as well, or if units of distance as well, just like x does, then when I, the units that I get out of this are meters squared, and that's an area. And that's actually what I'm doing, right? I've got this little side right here, and then I'm multiplying it by the side here. I'm basically taking the area of a rectangle. So the geometric interpretation of this is that if I take this integral, let me get rid of all the, all the, the fluffy marks here. If I take this integral, what I'm actually doing is I'm adding up a little bitty area right here. And then a little bitty, I'm adding to that another little bit area, little bitty area right next to it. And a little bitty area right next to that. And a little bitty area right next to that. Remember, an integral is just a summation. The integral symbol is just a fancy S. Just like this means summation. This is, the sigma means summation over some discrete values. The integral is a summation over continuous values. Right, and so all I'm doing is I'm adding up these little areas. Now, I'm drawing them with some distance in between them just for clarity. But remember, in, if I'm actually taking the integral, these things are right next to each other. Right. So if I add up this little area here, this little area here, this little area here, this little area here, what am I going to get when I integrate over this whole thing? Well, I'm going to get the whole area that's under that curve. So for my definite integral now, if this is x1, and this is x2, and I evaluate this integral, the value of that integral just equals what I've marked in red. It's the area underneath my function curve. Right? Now, let me get rid of all that. And I should say that if I'm evaluating at different points, right? if this is x1 and this is x2, and I evaluate that integral, then what I've gotten then is the area under my function curve between those two points, right? We're going to see this uh, when we get into work because what we're going to find out, and if you've already been through the class or if you know what work is, this is no news to you. If you're, if you're in my class and you're watching this in preparation for uh, this week's lecture, then maybe you haven't seen this before. If you haven't, please go read your chapter. Uh, work is a force times a distance, right? So if my force here, if this is my force, if my function, is, uh, if my function is a force, and then I have um, the distance over which I'm applying that force, what we're going to see is this is going to come out to be geometrically uh, the area underneath the curve of my force. All right, I realize it is possible that none of this made any sense. If you haven't been through Cal one and you haven't seen the integrals, and this is brand new you might be going, uh, what? And that's okay if that's where you are. I'd encourage you to watch it a couple more times. Go to your calculus text uh, and maybe look forward a little bit and read up on some integrals because you're going to need to understand at least this idea about the area under the curve for our discussion on work and energy. All right.